Are you a fan of horror movies? Necronomicon Ex Mortis. The Book of the Dead. We're all cult classics. Your move, creep. If you are, you'll love shocking things. Please search for us on all the major podcasting platforms. To see our social media and a direct link to our podcast, just go to anchor.fm slash shocking things. All right, everybody, this is the PWZ Podcast. I am Rick Del Santo, and joining me, the original Beast of New England, hardcore icon, Bull Dread. What's going on? Hey, goodbye. Finally back again. After I know, it's been months. 10 Here, months. Almost. Yeah, almost. I can't believe it, man. And we had you on a couple times before talking about the legendary career of yours and uh, everything, really. So what have you been up to these days? Hey, you see, I mean... Uh... I've been getting myself out there and a lot more shows. And unfortunately, the more I get myself out there, the more they want you back. And it's like, okay, <laughs> then, then shows conflict with each other. But that's the business. That's what it is to be an indie wrestler. But, right. uh, you know, I mean, you're loyal to your home, you know. And your home currently is uh, Paradise Alley, correct? Yeah, that's my home. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, I'd rather drive 30 minutes. <laughs> then drive two hours to get the same amount of money. But, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean I don't want to go drive two hours like to Rhode Island or somewhere else. It just sometimes, uh, you know, I'm, at, I'm 46 and I dread to drive more than the actual match now. I can I, I fully understand you there. I, I, I hate even getting into the car these days to go down the road. So I can only imagine. <laughs> so, well, but... I mean, I did a show for uh, in uh, New World Wrestling Extreme, and I had a great time, and I wanted to go back, but it didn't, the, the, they wanted me back, but the next show conflicted with Dieselmania. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, you know, I'm committed to Paradise Alley, and I had a great match against... Uh, he's, he's actually going to be there on Saturday. His name is um, Shea Cash, and I had a great match okay. with him, and I dreaded the drive home because, like, after that match, I took a lot of bumps, and that two-hour drive home, and I couldn't get out of my car and, Steps. <laughs> wow. Uh, and speaking of which, of you're right, absolutely. And speaking of which, this Saturday's Elm City Showdown at the JCC, uh, presented by Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping I'm going to get to that show. Uh, it, it's it's going to be another big event. There's a lot of new names on that show. Uh, what? what a um, yeah, a lot of younger guys coming in. So I haven't heard any word as to who you're facing. Is there uh, any surprises? Nothing yet? Your okay. guess is as good as mine right now. But honestly, I mean, yeah, sometimes I would like to know. You know, you like to have a little heads up. Like, hey, prepare in a way. But it's not the first time, not the last time I get to the event. And that's when you find out. Right, right. So um, you've had quite the eventful year as well. Traveling yeah. new places, like you said, you got to work Battlefront. Is that was that your first time working Battlefront? Yeah, I've been wanting to go there. I had my you know mixed opinions that going up there, but like sometimes like shows they would run a show and I couldn't make it up there because mm-hmm. you know I've been divided. I like you know I was very hesitant at a point in my life at a career where get myself out there, but uh, you know they would run shows and I couldn't make it because I was either I had the kids that weekend and you know and they were still my my younger one was still smaller. But now I bring him sh- to, to shows with me, uh, and they ran a show, and I contacted Dan, you know, Necromancer, and because uh, I was available that weekend, and we made it happen. I had a great time, you know. I mean, I've been seeing your son go with you at shows uh, quite frequently, hanging out. Uh, what's he think of professional wrestling? Any dreams or aspirations to join the wrestling he, life? I ask, I ask him. You know, and he goes, eh, you know, but I, it's in his blood. I mean, 
he was a baby, you know, when uh, we were at Defiant DPW, and uh-huh. my, my ex-wife would hold, you know, Tammy would hold him, and he was a baby, like, in the crowd, so it's in his blood. My daughter, yeah, you know, she understands it a lot more now, but she doesn't come to all the shows because she has school and everything, and but uh, I ask him, and he goes, eh, you know, I, and I, and I, but I make it clear to him, I mean, just because daddy's a wrestler doesn't mean you need to be. It's like, I just want right. you to follow your dreams, no matter what they are. And I just hope that the steps I took to follow my dreams, that path, you take the same path, whatever what you want to do. And that's for both the kids. And that's yeah. what I tell everybody, you know. And he's still end. young, right? He's still young, yeah. like early teens. He'll be 14 at the end of okay. the year. They're around the same age as my, both my son and my stepson. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I always bring my boys to the shows whenever they're in town. So, uh, yeah, let's get them together one day. And they're not necessarily wrestling fans either. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but um, I got a dude got to tell you that the one of the things that um, they do enjoy watching Bre- uh, Bull Dread, though, I will tell you that. And um, when my boys came the last time, I think they came over the summer, they stayed with me a month. One of the first things they asked me, is there any Paradise Alley shows? Literally, there was one the day that they were coming into town. So I pulled them, picked them up from the airport, and we went to a show at night. The f- second thing they asked me, they were asking if you were on any of the shows. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's good. Wow. I mean, th- I guess. Um, do does that have to do with like maybe that video too when uh and I when I kissed well, the little one on his head? Too? Oh, the little one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He he likes seeing say Jameson, right? Jameson, right? Yeah. yeah he's so he's are. he's to live. He lives with me. You know, he's yeah. with me and me and uh, my wife now. Um, but he loves going to the shows, too, but he's a little too active, so I don't bring him uh, as yeah, much. Yeah, believe me, I know. <laughs> yeah, I can't pay attention. Sometimes I film a lot of the shows, you know, the smaller shows, so I'm not able to if I got him with me. Um, but if I could, you know, I bring the other boy, the older boys, uh, he'll sit with him while I do all the good stuff. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's nice to um, be remembered and people, you know, recognizing you, like, I don't know if you saw the picture I posted the other day, and uh, I took the kids out to Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterbury. And uh, as soon as we walk in, you know, they greet us, and a kid greeted us, and he was like, he looked at me and literally goes, wait, aren't you? And I stopped him, I looked at him, I go, yep. <laughs> and lo and behold, he was a kid that used to come to the Northeast shows, and that's how he remembered me. Okay. And we, yeah, and... Uh, he was going around telling all his workers, the, the waitress and that shit, that, like, you know, who I was. was my, my daughter was like, he's still talking about you, telling everybody. <laughs> and uh, he, and the late waitress came up to me. She was like, yeah, you literally made his day. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a great feeling, you know. And I took a picture with him. And he showed me a That's... picture that we took together, like, six years ago. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. It's funny when I go into the stop and shop over here out in Cheshire. Everybody in the deli is apparently a wrestling fan, so I'll be wearing. Somebody comp- commented on my Terry Funk shirt that I'm wearing now today. Like, oh, he's great. You know, every time I wear a shirt, so I gotta. And then now everybody wants to sit there and talk to me for an hour <laughs> about wrestling. <Yeah. laughs> but they always talk about Northeast wrestling, and they talk. They said they've been going there for years, and they do. Your name has been brought up a couple times, and Ronnie's name was brought up as well. So. Yeah, it's yeah. tough when. Uh... People talk about Northeast and, you know, just like the kid said to me on Saturday, he goes, it's just not the same without seeing me and Ron. Uh And I have to take that. I take that to heart because things still burn me at times, you know, still being an active wrestler and they're running my hometown. Right. Yeah. They're They're running around the corner. Yeah. They're they're literally running November 20th. And I was working for um, uh, Tough and Talented, but he canceled the show. And uh, literally on the 20th, now I'm free, and they're running at the high school, literally a two-minute walk for me. So I kind of feel like I'm an active wrestler still in Waterbury, and you're in my hometown, and you're not contacting me? I and you worked there me. for Yeah, you worked there for years. One of the things I noticed is, though, that place has changed, uh, Northeast Wrestling, over the years. They, they seem to go for a lot of, like, bigger indie talent, it seems, and, and less... Uh, local guys, very few local guys, I should say. But that's the way, yeah. I mean, they used to bring in all the local guys, and um, but that's the business and how it's changed now because it's all about the money. It's about how many asses you can put in seats, right? And uh, you know, just like with Ronnie, people still love him and they want to see him, but not everybody's there to pay 
paying to see him. They're there to see the big other names. And the promoters yeah. looking at it like how much money he's going to be making because mm-hmm. he has to pay these talent, the talent. I mean, he brings in guys like Cody and, and, and you know, guys like that, Darby Allen and guys that are on AEW TV every week, you know. And, and so, you know, immediately he knows immediately that the place is going to sell out or you know, going to be jam packed. So then he could put on a guy like Ron or he had private party at a, a one of their shows against Waves and Curls, too. That was, you know, they, that was a yeah, pretty big match for Waves and Curls. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business. And I yeah. understand that totally, but the way I look at it also is, is I'm still an active wrestler, and you're in my mm-hmm. hometown. Yeah, and you, like I said, you worked for them for years, and then they just stopped contacting you pretty much, right? I just yeah, told you. I, I still kind of think it was an inside thing, but you know, I think it was just an excuse to get me out. But uh, at this point in my life and my career, like I said, I'm not trying not to be bitter or anything like that, but it's like you run my hometown, and I'm still active. It's like, damn, you know. I mean, people gotta send me texts and messages. It's like, hey, are you gonna be there tonight? Well, I hope to see you. And what the fuck am I supposed to say? You know, I mean, I don't want to. Yeah. Pass them. You want to eventually go back. You want to end it there. But I'm just a very strong. I have big. I believe strongly in. You should be contacting me. I shouldn't have to like reach out to you. Right. I look I at it know. like this: if people have. If people can, if you could, if they can contact you to tell you you're not going to be on the show, they can contact you to be like, hey, I would like to have you in the show. You're in your, we're in your hometown. Yeah, I mean it makes people, sense, right? Yeah, I mean, but you can't. Uh, you know, I mean, you're not going to get everything you want in life, right? I had my time. I had a great time. I don't. I wish uh, it didn't have to end the way it did, but it is what it is. People still know who I am, no matter where I go. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that's a good thing. I mean, you are known throughout the Northeast. I mean, you've been getting gigs out of state. I mean, that's a positive thing, really. You know, see, you might not be getting a gig with them, yeah. a company that you were loyal to for as many years, but here you are getting gigs in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. I mean, so, you know, one door closes, yeah. another opens, you know what I mean? Yeah, because, you know, loyalty has has its good and bad. You mm-hmm. know, there's both two sides to it. You could be loyal to a fault. But then at the end of the day, it could bite you in the ass because it didn't mean nothing. And that's kind of mm-hmm. how I felt. So I had to get myself back out there again. And do I enjoy it? Yeah, I get to work with talent that I never get the, you know, I didn't get a chance to with before. And uh, talent, I mean, not talent. Uh, loyalty is what held me down because you didn't want to lose a spot. Right, and uh, I ended up losing it anyway, and I was still being loyal even after that, until I made that phone phone call to Mario, and you know, and the rest is history. Like I said, it got in better shape. I got myself back out there. Um, I don't want to push myself too much because I do enjoy my time home and being alone, and you know. And then on top of it, I still got to get up and go to work. So yes. You um you've lost quite a bit of weight in the last year since COVID. You're probably one of the very few people that uh, no, I know I've gained weight. Uh, you're probably one of the few people that went the opposite direction. You just trained your ass off and probably dropped what close to 100 pounds, I think. Well, if not I more. Was, I was. It's going to be two years that I started doing the intermediate fasting. I started it on, at Taco Fest. At uh, the North Haven Fair, yeah, like North I started Haven. it to, like the next yeah, and um, I was two eighty nine, and now I'm now I'm stable, and I've been maintaining around two forty five. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, it's about you know forty five forty five pounds. I've been you know I'm not trying to get any smaller because mm-hmm. you know I don't want then I can't call myself a beast, but. Uh, <laughs> It's just been weight, you know, lifting and just, I'm not trying to get big. I'm just staying, trying to stay healthy and strong. And uh, I do 500 push-ups every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I maintain that. Yeah. And uh, it's just maintaining. I don't, I'm not on a strict diet or anything like that. I just, like I said, I fast and I'll treat myself every now and then. And uh, it's about maintaining, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're getting, we're not getting any younger. So I'm kind of preparing myself for the second half of my life. I've seen some of the food that you've been uh, treating yourself with online. Yeah. Oh, this, did you like the stuffed French 
toast I made last night. Oh, hell yeah. You know, I would sit there and be like, damn, if I wasn't so fat myself, I'd probably, you know, say, hey, I'm coming over. But, you know, I've been trying to tr- to drop weight. It's the beer now that's killing me. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, you got to look back, Gay. Eh? Like, the journey was easy. Well, for me, I can say the journey was easy. Mm-hmm. It's, um, maintaining, was, which is harder because you could just quickly fall off and go right, right back to your bad habits. Uh, but... Um, you ever like do something that you're scared of and you're like after you're done you're like okay that was nothing then you mm-hmm. do it again yeah it's the same thing you, you got to give yourself a goal every day you know to give yourself yeah. something to look forward to every day and that's how you maintain it. yeah yeah so uh you know don't say i'll oh, start monday no start now yeah see that's the that's a problem for me i want to know i'm in waterbury like two three times a week is there any good pizza places out there dominic and pia's is downtown um, they're right in the middle, of, like downtown Waterbury. Then, uh, like I've been Chenzo's up to where I am. You got Mario's Pizza, which is on the uh, Watertown. I have. They're a little bit like, on their expensive side. They make like the square pizza. They got Dominic and Vinny's. There's yeah. a lot of good places. But yeah. for me, I've had them all. So pizza's pizza. That's not true. That's the worst thing an Italian man can say, or anybody can say. Being an Italian, growing up, you know, I grew up in New Haven, literally. Yeah. The heart of, Wor- like, New Haven is like Worcester Square, you know. It's like it's the best pizza in the world. So I kind of have high standards when it comes to pizza. <laughs> so Don't get me wrong. I mean, I have my favorites, but it's like yeah. you've been eating pizza all your life and have them all from all over Connecticut because of work yeah. and people eat pizza. You can never well, say no to pizza. I'm not going to be going and say, like, if I got the choice of Frank Pepe's or Domino's, I'm definitely choosing Pepe's. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too, you know. I mean, Little you know. Caesars is actually, you know, for $5, they make a decent pizza. Well, I'm going to tell you, when I first, when we first moved into our first home, probably 10 years ago before we moved into this one, there was a Little Caesars around the corner. Let me tell you, that $5 pizza came in handy on, like, a Sunday after work when nobody wanted to freaking cook. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just like go in there, grab a couple pieces. Like, here you go, guys. Yeah, it was good yeah. when you were paying child support and broke. I'm still paying child support, but it's a whole nother topic. It's a whole nother. I only got one. <laughs> not, yeah. Not a lot. I got three kids with my ex wife. So, you know, it well, is what, what it I'm is. I'm saying, like, when I was telling you, like, I'm preparing for the second half of my life. You know, my yeah. daughter's 18, my son will be 14. Mm-hmm. Once the, he's 18, my daughter will be 22. In four years, I'll be fifty, and you know that's what I'm. Pro- yeah, you know, and then uh, that's when I'm probably looking to like you know wrestling. I'm gonna have to say goodbye, so I'm gonna try to cherish as much as I can in the next four years if I make it. You know, in the business. I think you will, and no matter what happens, if I'm not even involved in wrestling or this podcast in five years, you got to reach out to me and well, say hey, and we'll say I'm retiring, and I will be there for that. I promise you. Yeah, um, I. You know, I tell you right now, I can see us. We will have a friendship outside the business. I love that. I love that. You know I mean, uh, and that's what I think I bring to this business is realism. I mean, mm-hmm. it's because, you know, what's ruined the wrestling is social media. You know, yes. you know, WWE and, you know, just all the bullshit they're there. So it's like, and that's probably one of the things I feel like I'm getting punished for is, I'm just being myself, no matter what. And, you know, you get punished for it, for being your humor, this and that. There's so much other bullshit, negative stuff on social media that I get targeted you know, for something funny. I get what you're saying completely. It's the, the society today and that whole cancel culture. It's like you can't have any kind of sense of humor. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You can't. It, it doesn't allow you to have an oddball sense of humor or dark humor or, or any of that kind of shit, because it's just like, oh no, you're a bad person because you said this, these jokes or whatever. I'm not sitting here talking racist stuff. I'm not sitting here talking bad about women. It's just we're having a good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and these, uh, I don't know how to describe them, uh, neck beards, hipsters, whatever you want to call them. Sit right. there and cry, and then pull air, pull the rug right out from under you. You know, a fucking cartoon got canceled in the last year. 
You know what I mean? I mean, God knows what else. Some, some Christmas tale got canceled. It's a song canceled. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm, you know what I mean? It's it, it's the modern society, and I'm not saying I'm a very leftist person and open minded, but it's a little extreme, I think. Well, I mean, like I said, I look back and I know where maybe I was drawing the line. I should have stopped. You know, things that I was posting, and I was not, I wasn't posting anything bad. You know, yeah, maybe I don't, humor and see, I don't think it's that bad, you know what I mean? It's not, but then I got targeted, and, yeah, and um, and I, you know, to lose a spot because of that, you know, uh, it's I feel, politics, politics, you know, it was probably just a setup, not a setup, but you know what I mean? It's just like, well, here's our excuse, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's what I feel like, and I said, like, uh, yeah. I started feeling like I was an obligation towards the end, like, okay, we're running Waterbury, damn, okay, we, we forgot, Joe. we got to do something with Dread, it's Waterbury, that's what yeah. I started feeling like. And, I'm going to uh, tell you, you're loved in the New Haven crowd, I will tell you that. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, like, you know, like, when I went to Rhode Island, you know, I got announced and I worked that shit, you know, that kid Shay Cash, I went mm-hmm. out, people didn't really know who I was. Few people did. I got a future. Like, I really? got the video. There were a few little, you know, noises or whatever. But made I made sure they remembered me after I was done. But I know it's was, a, was that I know somebody I know somebody that lives up in the Massachusetts area and uh they were extremely excited. And they yeah. were at that show that show. They were extremely excited and uh they love the fact that you were there. The one with uh you're you you are talking about the one with Gangrel, right? In Rhode Island? Yeah, it's the one oh, yeah, okay. yeah. They go to those shows sometimes because I guess it's close to them. So Yeah. Uh I saw Eric there and he's never seen me live. Yeah. And he's I a made fan. sure yeah. I went I came out from the back before the show started and he was sitting front row. I made sure I went up to him and said I gave him a big hug from behind, I think. To say hello. Great guy. Bro. Yeah, yeah really good guy. Well, I mean, I try to appreciate the fans as much as I can. People that show you support, and I'm not going to treat a fan any different if I'm in the ring or outside the ring. I mean, you know, depending on the character, I guess like what, what I'm doing. But well, anyway, um, speaking you know, of which, fans, and I'm just, I'm not going to change who I am. Speaking of which, seeing that you're talking about the love and the support and all this stuff for the fans, you can actually support Bold Dread tomorrow. Pro Wrestling Tees. Starts a 24-hour yeah. customer appreciation sale. 20% off. Go grab yourself a Bull Dread shirt. Did you like my new shirt? I do. I, I'm actually, tomorrow morning, I got excited. I went to the bank today, deposited a check. I said, the first thing I said is, like, I'm going on pro wrestling tees. <laughs> I haven't bought a new shirt in months. And then I'm sitting there driving around saying, what the fuck shirt? I know I want to, I know a couple of shirts I'm going to buy. But then I said to myself, you know, it's about time I actually press add to cart for that dread shirt <laughs> to myself. <laughs> I came up with so many ideas. Like I came across nah. a meme. I came across a, 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 pit, a meme that I posted and they said, I'm a pro wrestling guy. And I'm saying mm-hmm. to myself, and Kurt Adonis had a shirt made that said, I'm a Bull Dread guy. And I'm saying to myself, okay, here's a great idea. I'm a hardcore, I'm a hardcore nightmare guy. And and I didn't call myself a hardcore nightmare. It was uh, Jerry Strauss from Northeast Wrestling on commentary called me the mm-hmm. hardcore nightmare. And that's how a lot of things, like when somebody calls you something, it sticks, you know, or there's mm-hmm. something I say. And that's how I, I didn't call myself a fucking hardcore icon. A fan said it to me, you know, but um, I think I should say it too, because I beat Ronnie one night. And I think that's how, yeah, twice. And that's how I started calling myself a hardcore icon. But I was like, you know, you have two hardcore icons here in Connecticut. And uh, and I was like, two people, a person said that, not me. And uh, That's how it works, though. That's how it works. And that's how the name is, and ends up continuing. Somebody says it, whether it be a commentator or that's how. Let's see how the four horsemen were formed. Arn Anderson just said, We are going to be the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Next thing you know, the next week they're calling themselves the four horsemen. You know what I mean? It's always like a line that comes out of nowhere. And yeah. that's how something sticks. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. that's how I mean, it that, sticks, man. My, my mind constantly goes it's it's on the go yeah. all day between writing promos any like i talk to myself more than i talk to anybody else <laughs> but, uh, but it's like you know and, and i've actually tried to calm down to like stuff i post you know because i was constantly posting on facebook 
and it was stuff I wrote, and it's because that's my that's my mind going. Right. You know, I just take mem- I just take notes now, and uh, you know, you see a quote or a meme, and you post it, and kind of gets your mind going. And when it comes to wrestling, a lot of the stuff I come up with is I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking, making believe I'm talking to somebody else in a promo or I'm a third you. person, that, and that's how I come up with a lot of the stuff. You know? That's how I practice my podcast. I'm going to be honest. I'll drive around and I sit there putting my show together in the car by myself. You get what I'm saying? I feel yeah. comfortable. And the next thing you know, I got the whole show laid out in my car. <laughs> Whether it actually well, transfers properly once I hit that record button, that's a whole other story. Well, and, and like, like, what are the things that like, I, you saw? The, what did you think of the promo I, I did the other day on Yusuf? I liked it. I, I don't. Yeah, I know I did. That's the, you're gonna wrestle. Where are you wrestling him? Is that in the? Next week I'm wrestling in Battlefront. It's Battlefront Look against Matt. Battlefront. Okay. Yeah. I think you, I've seen him a couple times. Oh, only video. I've never seen him live. But yeah. yeah, I think that dude's got potential, and I think that that might be kind of a decent match, man. That's gonna be a good yeah. match. Our first match is on YouTube now. If you type in, you know, Bull Dread and whatever, it should be the first match to come up. Okay. I constantly watch my work, my matches during my cardio when I'm at the gym. You know, I mean, A, because I, I use my, I got my tablet. B, I want to see if somebody's watching it from behind me. You know, if there's a <laughs> nice hot girl or something, whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I in my promo, I said, you know, I'm going to make you famous. There's a reason for that. You know, right. and uh, and this is one of the things I love doing and, you know, on a shoot is I love working with younger talent, you know, guys that like, I mean, I try to keep up with them as much as I can. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I work, oh, like I worked Kylon, you know, and I remember you. That I me, couldn't believe. I thought that like when that was, I thought that pairing was really odd and I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but in the end, when it was said and done and the match was over, I was like, that was a good fucking match. Like, it worked, you know what I mean? That's like, you know, this legend of the area with a future star. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pairing them up together, and I loved it. And I sat, I was sitting right ringside. I was up against the ring, sitting next to Perez for that match when it happened. I loved it. And he's a, he's a big kid, you know, what I mean by yeah. big. Like, I think he, he weighs less than me, but he looks bigger than me. Really? Yeah. Really? He's taller than me, too. And he's great to work with young talent. And... Uh, like you said, the pairing you know, looked odd, but I think if you were to rewind the clock and I was 290, I don't think I would have been able to do what I did. It worked mm-hmm. that way. I'm only able to work the way I do because, obviously, of the weight loss. And uh, I definitely felt it on the way home, you know, in the next morning, because the recovery time is longer now. I mean, when we get older, everything takes longer. You know what I'm I saying? I mean, yeah, 100%. Everything. Yeah. Everything. I'm getting up there too. Me and you were the same age. I only think we're not that far apart. I mean, as you far know, as months go. Even from yeah. the waist down, everything takes longer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, yes, uh, that's all I got to so, say. Uh, but in the match, um, I mean, I don't know. People didn't, you know, on a shoe. I mean, he he did rock me with mm-hmm. a forearm. And uh, caught me just good, and I was dazed. And I went down. Like that's the first time that's actually happened to me. Really? And uh, you know, just I'm not complaining or anything like that because you know what? It's like playing football. If you can't take a tackle, get the fuck out. I'm not right. complaining. He was a great match. It was a great kid to work with, um, and I'll definitely do it again. But I got I got rocked. It's funny you said that. If you can't take a tackle. And get out. It's like it seems like that's a popular thing in the business. It seems like the young kids these days. Uh, I don't want to talk bad about anybody. Like, not even like. It seems like the kids these days aren't as tough. Like when we were growing up, it was a different kind of concept as far as like what wrestlers were. They were more. They really toughened you up. You know what I mean? They hazed you. Yeah. They beat the crap out of you legitimately for months and months and months before you actually got in that ring and. You know, they uh, they tough guide you. I, I don't even know if it's just coming out correctly or not, but I hope I hope you understand what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, it, the, the the opportunities didn't come as easy because yeah. now it's like because it's still a business. You don't want to beat a kid up, then lose that money. 
then you just yeah. use a pseudo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's one way to look at it. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that I had an easy road. You know, I had some hard nights. I mean, but you, but, you grew up in a different time period as well. This is a whole yeah. different era uh, of professional wrestling. You know what I mean? You coming up was a different era. Like you were kind of like the the end of the old school, I think. I believe you know what I mean. Pretty As much. Opposed to, yeah, and like now it's it's things are a little bit um, not as extreme. Not to you know in a way. Put it this way: in my era, we didn't see ten super kicks in a match. I'm going to tell you that's one thing I got, and if you if you don't mind me getting off the trail for a second, that's one thing I don't particularly like in uh, professional wrestling. I, I It's nothing against the talent that is on these shows. I can go to a show, an indie show, and next thing you know, I've seen 300 super kicks by the second match. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of irritating. Like That like, seems to be the, the popular maneuver, is the super kick or um, some, cor- some sort of suicida dive through the ropes or... God knows whatever. You know what I mean? There's a lot of trendy moves these days that like every wrestler has to do. But when you go to some indie show, three or four matches in a row, you're going to see a lot of that stuff over and over and over. And it's kind of irritating. There's right, no. I'm going to tell, gonna go tell you, psychology-wise, and something that I saw. Go at for a it. Show. It was a recent show. I was on it. Yeah. And I was, you know, in the back and I was watching. I'm not going to tell you what show. I saw a show, two guys working, one of whom I worked. He gave his finisher to someone else. The kid got up and hit the other, hit him with his finisher, or they hit him with another move. Mm -hmm. Completely no sold the, the move that his finisher, move that I took, that beat me. Yeah, that's a popular thing that happens these days. He hit him with a move, and they're both down. Yeah, I looked at it. The fans look at it like, "Oh my god!" You know, the fans look at it that way because they want to be entertained. They just want to see action. I'm sitting there looking like I took that kid's finisher for the win. You know, for the for you know to, to put him over. Okay, and a kid that weighs half what I am didn't even sell it like it was nothing. Hit to hit him with a, his own move. To me, I kind of felt like, where's the psychology in that? No, I had that conversation with a promoter not so long ago. You know what I mean? That that's what's lost in the business today. I was on a recent show, and this seems to be not on. I'm sorry, I was at a recent show, and this seems to be something that's somewhat popular in this in a particular performer's matches that they continue to go for this finisher. Three or four times in a match before they hit it. It's like to add drama to the match. It's I get, just, yeah. You get what I'm saying? And it's just teasers. annoying to see. Yeah, there's too many teasers. It's just, come on, dude. Like, that can't happen every single match. And, and, and I call this the Ring of Honor syndrome. Because if you remember Ring of Honor, it was just all work rate guys that would do stuff like that over and over. There's Don't been. Forget s- Beyond also. Well, yeah, yeah, they started around the same time, probably, yeah. But, I mean, for years, there was all these work rate guys that were just doing near falls after near falls. And how many times do you have to hit a finisher? It's not just there's guys getting out of tombstone pile drivers. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's with that? It's like you hit a finisher, and people are just kicking out of it. There's no real finisher. Like, you have to hit, like, something even bigger than your normal finisher. It's just kind of... Like you said, there's no psychology in, in it. You know, I, I like to see a really good story unfold. That's why I'm a very big traditionalist when it comes to professional wrestling. I grew up in the 80s. Me and you grew up in the same era yeah. and just appreciate the business from the 80s and, and, and into the early 90s the most because it was probably the best era. And I still go back now and watch stuff from, you know, I could I could – Put on some AWA from like 1983, you know what I mean? And well, sit there I, and I do the same my thing. glory. Yeah, yeah. I do the same yeah. thing. You yeah. know, the other night I was watching, uh, I think it was a Survivor Series. I was like, Mike, you got to watch this. And it was Team Hogan versus, uh, shit, I forgot the other team. Oh, the team with Zeus. 
it was a Survivor so that was 1989 1990 maybe or 1989 i, don't I think remember. i'm trying to remember but either I, way i don't think went to the bedroom <laughs> i was sitting there <laughs> watching that but i was like ah, it's getting boring so i'll but, tell you that's funny that you said that because one day i sat there we kept somebody i know was like my friend's my wife's friend's daughter kept talking about CM Punk, yada, yada, yada. Like, ah, oh, no, man, you got to watch this instead. You know, I put on Flair Steamboat. This is the greatest match ever. Next thing you know, everybody's like, what the hell are you watching? Why are we watching this? I, they just, they got lost. Couldn't understand the concept of this fantastic match. And now I'm not saying it's nothing against CM Punk. I mean, but I'm just saying because he's a really great performer, too. He's one of the few in that 20-year period that was like, you know, got it. But the Flair Steamboat thing, I'm like, this is the greatest match of all time. And you're just, it's just not clicking with certain people. It's what the era that they grew up in. Yeah. Well, like what you said from the beginning, everything has changed. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's what's going to draw, what's going to mm -hmm. make money. And you got to use the top. Uh, you know, some guys have actually said to me, because, oh, I really want to get in the Northeast. I'm like, dude, it's changing. Like, if you're not an AEW talent, top indie guy, you're not going to get in, man. It's like it's running AEW. It's like running the AEW house show, basically, in a way, because there's so many AEW guys on there, and then there's a few local guys, and they work well with like Chaotic and Ring of Honor as well. You know what I mean? They swap talent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't. I mean, I, I watch their events online, and I haven't attended one of their events probably in like four years, maybe since pre-COVID, definitely. So and I really don't have much interest in it because it's like. Everything is uh, bringing big stars and, and meet and greets and stuff like that. That's a huge part of their show. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I miss the money. I miss the meet and greet. You know, I used <laughs> to make money. But uh, but like I said, like what, what I was saying before is uh, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels like the Monday Night Wars are happening again. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great time to be a pro wrestler with the exposure. I yeah. am, I get up depressed a little bit because I wish I could turn back the clock 10 years, be younger, but in the shape that I am now, because maybe life would have been a little different. Right. But I can't think like that because uh, I've had a great career, I believe. And, uh, you know, and I wouldn't change anything if I had to do it over again. I mean, what's next goal for me is to get into some type of Hall of Fame. I'm sure that'll happen. I am absolutely 100% sure. I don't know. Watch. Quote me. Okay. Take my word. Take my word. <laughs> so, right. You had a really good year, though, wrestling-wise. I mean, it's been a weird year. COVID happened, all this stuff. But you had some really good matches. Yeah. Take a look at um, you had a chain match with uh, Maxim Morozov for the uh, with the Intercontinental title. Yeah, that w I can tell you, I was nervous as hell for that. You know why? Why is that? Because you've never done it before. I've never been a wrestler before. I mean, a professional wrestler before. I wrestled amateur in school, but that was the extent of it. So, yeah. Yeah, it was because it was new. I've never done it, but then after I we did it, yeah, yo, let's do that again. That was your first any chain match or anything like that. That was my first, yeah, my first Russian chain match. I mean, uh, I've oh. never had a cage match. I've been in a cage before, but I've never had a cage match. I've had, had plenty of street fights, you know, barbed wire. I've, I've been in a tables match. I've been in a ladder match. I've seen you not go th not go through a table. I've seen you bounce there's off. There's a video of me going. There's a couple, I've been through a few tables. Yeah, you saw me bounce off one, but there's a video <laughs> of me and Ron. Yeah, and Ron uh, Ron giving me um, a rock bottom through a table, and uh, and, and the table broke and hit him in the eye. Uh, it's on YouTube. Um, then and I had the the no remember the the big match I had with Big Jim was uh. You know, no fans, yeah. balls count anywhere. That was fun. You tried to kill you that with a car, fun. right? Yeah, you almost killed me with a car. Yeah, you know. Speaking I can't of which, believe it's been over a year since that. But I mean, I can't believe he's gone either. You know. Well, it's been a year since like a lot of weird. You know, the whole year, Indies died 
through like the year through COVID. We'll get into Jim in a second. Yeah. So a lot of companies were trying to find certain ways to keep interest, a lot of online content. So, you know, I mean, Paradise Alley did a couple things like that. You know what I mean? That, I thought that was a really great concept. You guys had the uh, empty arena. Uh, it was a last man standing match. Is that what it was? Yeah. And then you um, tried to run you down with a car. So yeah. that was pretty interesting. That was the first for me. And, you know, like you say, COVID changed a lot of things. And But I kind of look at, at, at the whole thing from the outside. Uh-huh. COVID was the worst thing and the best thing probably to happen because – I kind of, I, I feel that it started teaching people to kind of look at, like, uh, not to take for granted the most simple things in life. You know, like we talked about in the beginning, like how I lost weight. I started taking care of myself. It probably gave me longevity. You know, it got to the point where we had no shows, nothing going on. I'm like, I'm kind of liking my weekends, not just not doing anything. But then you started missing wrestling. You miss, started missing the crowd and performing and, oh. you know, he's then once you have it back and it's like okay you know you cherish it even more and i'm cherishing a lot more now because i see a light at the end of the tunnel Mm -hmm. you know it's still far far away don't get me wrong but you know i still feel it every day i feel it now i feel it with work i feel it at the end of the night um i'm like yeah I, i don't know you know it's i didn't see myself being 46 still you know 20 years in the business you know yeah. Let's talk about Big Jim a little bit. You were former tag team partners for our adversaries, and now he's uh, yeah. passed. Um, I'm not sure how to ask, but how, how do you feel about Big Jim's passing? It's sad because it's actually the first person in my career that's that's passed that like were active and I used to see him all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, me and him weren't the best of friends. You know, I remember him first starting in the business, coming around with Jay Busta when they found in Northeast Wrestling. I mean, mm-hmm. I've actually helped, you know, got in the ring with him and helped him, you know, want, uh, try to help him as much as I can at, at first in the beginning, you know. But like I said, uh, you know, he, you know, I had my my personal feelings about him, but I didn't let that come to light because uh, I always treated him with respect no matter what, you know. I mean, right. I never, you don't. You know, because, like, when you kind of look at life of, like, you know, you have a lot more to lose in life, you know, why why say anything, you know, kind of just I let it be water underneath the bridge. And, you know, I mean, you never, I never treated him any different. I did the first time I met him, but it was sad because it made me think, like, wow, this could happen to me. Right, you know, I could it could be me, you know, out, out of nowhere. It could be any one of us, you know. Right, kind of shows you how life fragile, how life fragile is, how fragile life is. I remember the night that it happened. I was actually recording with uh, Big Daddy when he got the phone call that he had yeah. passed. Mario had called him and uh, interrupted, so he's like, um, "I was recording with him and somebody else. We were doing a yeah, I remember." And I was just like, when he came on, when he, when Big Daddy came back, nothing was the same after that. It's like we pretty much wrapped it up and was just like, uh, just a friend of ours passed and that was it. And I really didn't know, you know, I, I liked him a lot. I thought he was a really good dude. But, you know, I probably didn't know him on the level that a lot of people did, you know. Yeah. Um, he was just always very friendly to me. He always went out of his way. To say hello, we talked on music, talked about music a lot online, you know, and at shows and stuff like that. Never about wrestling. I don't think I've ever discussed wrestling with <laughs> outside of like the podcast, maybe like his appearance on the podcast. But you know, he's uh, he's greatly missed though. It's like it's really hard to 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 think that uh, someone that you had probably just spoke to just a couple of days prior, all of a sudden you get a notification that he died within a you know. It's just very bizarre, and it kind of hits you in a certain way, you know. Somebody that you're yeah. used to seeing at shows, you walk in the door, there he is. And I always said that he was like a very friendly person. Uh, I don't know what your personal relationship was with him, but he would always make his way over to me just to shake my hand and say, "Hey, how's it going?" And you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it was the same with me. It, uh, 
you know, but like you know, said, I mean, you, you, people have their own demons, you know, and sometimes yeah. they can't control oh, it. And, yeah. and I don't know no, too I much. I mean, and uh, it, uh, I remember Mario called me crying, and right. I had just gotten home from the gym. I'm like, what's the matter? And he told me, and um, the family wanted to hush hush, you know, not to say nothing, and. I called Ron. I told Zombie. I called one of our, a mutual friend that we both know, somebody that I'm, you know, I kind of talk to and close with. And um, then next thing you know, I started blowing up online. I was, um, you know, I wasn't gonna post anything, and then I was asked by somebody to, you know, to to not post anything, so I didn't. And I kind of felt after a while, after it blew up, that it was kind of safe to. But then I was contacted to not. <laughs> to take it down, but you know, I'm not gonna, which I understood completely. But once the company actually announced it and made it official, that's when I felt a little bit more comfortable to yeah. repost, you know what I mean? So it was just, uh, and, and, and it was felt not only through uh, the professional wrestling community, but the punk rock community as well. I knew a bunch of people that had actually known him uh, in the music, you know, the punk rock music scene throughout Connecticut that. That had posted it because he was in uh, that punk band that that had known him and couldn't believe that the whole entire thing. So I'm not exactly sure what happened, but he he is missed. You know, it, it's yeah. just a different different thing when you walk into that arena and he's not there. You know. Yeah, like you said, like you go there and you're expecting to see people, and they're not. It's not the same, you know. And mm-hmm. it's gonna take some getting used to. I w- I never wished him harm or anything. Uh, I mean, I just, like I said, I looked at it, you know, like, you know what, he, you know, he, whatever demons he's, he was fighting or whatever, I mean, you know, I can't, there's nothing I can do for him except pray. Right, and, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I said, I just kind of kept it to myself. And why make a big, this big deal out of something that, you know, that doesn't need to be you know, it needs to be anything. So we just kind yeah. of let things. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. So uh, you always take the high road. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's missed, and it's weird because we were supposed to we were supposed to be in a six man tag for Diesel Mania. I heard. Yeah, I, I heard what was supposed to happen over those two shows between Rumble and Paradise and Diesel Mania that. Um, but the whole entire thing changed, I guess. You were supposed to be in a six-man tag, and then you got put into a, the the Battle Royal, considering that he had passed. And uh, you guys did a beautiful tribute to him at the end, you and Mario. Yeah, that was... Yeah, I didn't know what Mario was going to say. You know, did I didn't you know, know. Yeah. But Mario took the... Uh, I guess took the L, jumped over the rope, and... Yeah. It was my, my first ever win winning a battle royal in my career my first time <laughs> ever i was like i was so happy i didn't have to go over <laughs> it's kind of emotional kind of every time mario gets up there and talks about jim you know he opened up uh rumble in paradise with this amazing speech about jim you know yeah. and then uh and once uh the battle royal happened at uh diesel mania it was, it was pretty interesting you know uh it was yeah. nice. I, I, they were they were very close. I like I said. I mean, I feel at home in PAPW, and uh, mm-hmm. I've been wanting to go there for a long time. It was just like I said, what held me back was loyalty. I didn't want to lose my spot. I didn't want to. But um, the best decision I made was move on. I think I was at your first show in Paradise Alley. I think I could be at wrong. The hockey at the hockey ring. Was at the hockey ring? Who did you wrestle? Do you remember? I th- I know you. Uh, yeah, see, you don't remember either. The flamboyant, uh, the flamboyant one. That doesn't. Mm, that does nothing. Not Kenny. Not, not Kenny, Kenny Roberts. Kenny, Kenny, yeah. Okay. So I wasn't at your. I wasn't at the first one then, but I remember. You know, I had like I don't. I, and I've said this a lot of times. I was out of wrestling for a couple of years, and then I started coming around because of a chance. Uh, a chance uh, meeting. Paul Roman at a gas station one day who invited me to the shows yeah. and then so I started running in. I remember when I heard your music and I saw you come out and I was like, I lit him legitimately just text my friend and I was like, Holy shit, Bull Dread is here. 
was like, it, it was like, you remember this guy? Because I hadn't been around. I had literally stopped going to shows for about two, almost three years. When I divorced my first wife, and prior to meeting my second wife, you know, there was like yeah. a, a gap there. You know what I mean? Well, um, my first show for Paradise Alley was the at the hockey rink, I, I, and yeah. then the second one I think was the Rumble in Paradise. The third one is Diesel Mania when I read when I was the special like I was an open challenge for the Intercontinental title. Mm-hmm. Okay, so probably that one. I I don't were you did, is that's not where you won the title, right? No, 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 no. It, uh, it was. I'm trying. I'm really trying to remember because it was like going back a couple of years, and I, I don't even honestly. I, it was that long ago. My memory's kind of shot. Like, Two as years. I get old. Yeah, as I get older, like I can't remember stuff, so...